Hi there, and welcome to Absolute Value Parent Functions. So this lesson is technically something we've seen before, but I wanted to be sure we felt comfortable with it before starting this unit. However, before we jumped in, I did want to look at why are absolute values useful? Why should we even talk about this? Why are these helpful? Kinds of things like that. So I'm going to just give you three examples where absolute values are going to be meaningful. And just as a quick refresher, again, absolute value says I can plug in something like negative three and I get positive three. So it takes kind of the absolute value. So it's basically saying three either way. So this is helpful if you happen to be a geophysicist looking at energy overall. Because when I start looking at total energy, geophysicists kind of take into account negative and positive directions of movement, thinking like up and down, but we still care about that total overall. So that's one particular example. Another one is dealing with scuba divers. When you're saying I am 50 feet below sea level, we don't say we are negative 50 feet below sea level. We just say 50 feet. So it's kind of like we're taking the absolute value. The last one is a little bit sneaky, but I liked it, especially if you're interested in pursuing something in the math field and prefer to earn a lot of money. So let's say you're driving a car. Well, here's the problem. Going too fast is obviously a hazard and might get you a speeding ticket. However, going too slow is also a hazard and can earn you a ticket. So the biggest thing and what matters the most is you kind of find this sweet spot because really you're focused on how different your speed is from everybody else and how close you are to that speed limit, whether that's positive or negative. So that type of difference that's slightly above and slightly below is actually very fundamental in the world of statistics. And statistics are very helpful in dealing with things like medicine, dealing with things like finance and risk. It's a very important field in the math world and you can earn a lot of money doing statistics. If you're interested, we do offer that course here at RHS. So the thing that we are gonna take a look at is graphing absolute value. So again, I know we've seen it, but I wanna be sure we are comfortable with it before we move on. So we're just gonna look at transforming them and how to graph them. So kind of helping us remember and starting things off is the absolute value parent function. So that is y equals absolute value of x. So again, absolute value says that I can plug in a number, let's say something like negative three and things like even negative one. And all it's gonna do is kick out that positive number. So it becomes positive three and positive one. Same thing with zero, one, and three. So if it's positive, it already remains positive. If it's negative, so on and so forth. So I've got one, one, I've got three, three, kind of here's three, three. So hopefully you'll see it looks something kind of like that. And here's the best thing in the world when you're trying to remember what these look like. So here's this and here's this. If it helps, absolute value makes a V. Easy, easy way to remember that. It's one of my favorite things about it. All right, domain. So that's dealing with left and right X values. So it looks like I can plug in negative X's, I can plug in zero, I can plug in positives. So all real numbers for the domain. I can plug anything in. I'm also going to include set notation. So X such that X is an element of the real. It's always good to practice both notations. All right, the range is gonna look a little bit different simply because everything that I'm kicking out is turning positive. So you can see I'm only in the positives on the Y values. So I can't include zero though. So I'm gonna bracket zero to infinity. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and include the set notation. So Y such that Y is an element of the reals where y values are greater than or equal to zero. All right, line of symmetry. This one is a little interesting because it does kind of have us go back to a little world of algebra one. So on here, we can kind of see across this line where that line of symmetry is. And yes, it is the y axis, but we can also give it an equation. This one happens to be x equals zero. And we can kind of see that because all of these points along this line are x equals zero. It's like zero, six, zero, three, zero, two, zero, one, lots of good zeros. 
Okay, so let's take a look at transformations, the very, very first example. So if it helps, always map it out and start with the parent function, kind of like what we did above. So I'm gonna go ahead and graph the original on here. So I've got here one, two, two, three, four, five, five, so something kind of like this in blue. So there's the original. I always like to know what I'm starting with. It really helps these make a lot more sense. And it looks like I only have a few transformations to worry about. So I've got this one with a plus five on the inside, and I also see a minus two on the outside. Well, the minus two on the outside is gonna take all of my numbers and it's gonna shift them down by two. Not too bad there. The plus five, I know we haven't seen that in a while, so I always like to rewrite it, you guys know me. So it almost looks like that double negative and it helps us see that we're actually moving to the left by five. All right, so I'm gonna take that original graph, I'm gonna shift everything left five and then down two. And that's where all my new points are gonna go. Left five, down two. And then I'm just gonna make my new graph. Something kind of like that. So the biggest thing with this is why is the graph shifting left even though I see a plus five? Well, that should make it go right. So easiest way to think about these is you are always comparing the transformed function to the original. So this point right here where it says negative five, negative two, if it helps, take a look at those X values. Negative five is where I am. Ooh, but I was at the origin. Oh, negative five plus five takes me back to the beginning. So that's kind of a way that I like to see it. All right, domain, again, looks like I've got all real numbers because again, I can plug in any number that I want. Ooh, but it looks like my range is a little bit different on this one because I shifted down two. So now my range is down here. So I need to bracket because I can equal that negative two to infinity. Final answer. All right, if it helps, how are domain and range affected by transformations? So here's the good news. If it's I'm shifting it left and right, I need to check the domain. But here's the good news. Absolute values are all real numbers. I can always plug in any number that I want. However, if I'm shifting it up and down or I'm flipping it, be very careful. The range will change. So on this last one, I can see I went down to, and you can see the range started at negative two. So that's kind of a couple easy ways to spot that. All right, we're already halfway there. So we're gonna look at another transformation. This one I threw a couple more in because you can see I've got a negative, I'm seeing a half in the front, I'm seeing a minus one, and I'm seeing, ooh, a plus four. So four different transformations. So that negative, it's on the exterior. So I'm gonna flip everything on the x-axis because I'm making all those y values negative. So I'm going to put y is negative to help me remember why it's doing that. I see a fraction on the outside, so all those y values are going to be divided by 2. So this is going to be a vertical compression, so everything's going to get flattened by a half. I see a minus one on the inside, which is going to shift it to the right. And we kind of talked about why it looks that way. And finally, I see a plus four. So I'm going to add four to my Y values, which is going to shift everything up by four. Okay, so same thing. I have a parent function. So I'm going to go ahead and graph this original. Just so again, I always like to map it out first, unintended. Where is it going? What is it going to look like? Okay, so I have a couple transformations here. So I just need to make sure that I flip it, I compress it, I shift it right, and I shift it up. So I'm gonna take this one, right one, up one, two, three, here's the new point. And here's where I'm gonna use the flipping and I'm gonna use the compression. So the compression, 
I'll kind of spot that right here. So on here, how it went up one, over one, up one, over one, up all these points went up one, over one, every single one of these. So the compression is now gonna make it go down one, negative, over two, down one, over two, because they all kind of have that pattern. And there's the final graph. Looks something kind of like this and it got flipped. Woo, it's a bit of a compression going on right there. So if it helps, it kind of goes back to slope, that rise over run. Very, very similar is how we can think of these. Absolute value are kind of fun that way. They're one of the friendliest graphs just because they always have that pattern right here, that up one over one. They all have that same pattern. So that's the reason I'm allowed to do that. Again, domain is gonna be really friendly. Left to right, I can plug any number in that I want in the world. Range is a little different because I flipped it and I shifted everything up. So now it's negative infinity, all those negative Y values, I'm going to go up to positive four. Kind of looks like that. If you're curious about what the set notation is, so I've got Y is an element of the reals where Y is less than or equal to four. So either one of those notations you can always do. All right, last, that was the last graphing one. So this one, we're going to try to rewrite it by flipping it over the X axis and I'm gonna shift it right by nine. So what I like to do is highlight what number is gonna be affected. So it's a flip on the exterior X axis. So I'm gonna go ahead and it says find the equation. So G is my new equation equals, well, I'm gonna stick a negative on the outside because it's flipping on the X axis. I see there's a three here, which means it went to the left. And that means I'm gonna shift it right by nine. So I'm gonna leave a note here. I'm gonna put right nine. And then the minus two doesn't really matter because I'm not moving it anywhere up or down. So I always like to do a quick sketch because I can see technically right here, even though it says plus three, you, I think you already know where I'm going. It's really moved to the left. So when I go to the right, by nine, that new graph is gonna go past the origin and it's gonna keep going. So it's gonna look like this now. So it's gonna go all the way to positive six. And that's that final answer in G of X. So it's this one right here that I boxed in purple. You can always do a sketch. Sketching can be really helpful on these. All right, using a graph. So again, I always like to start with the parent function. So I'm gonna graph the original just so I can see where it is and how I'm comparing. Okay, so right here is at the origin. Ooh, I can already see transformation. So I can see that I went right by two. I can see I went down by four. I can see that I flipped on the x-axis, so exterior x-axis, and the last one is a little bit more challenging to see, but there was a compression. I can see it got kind of flattened a little bit, and I can see it went down one over two, so that's a vertical compression by a half. So I just need to make sure my final y equals equation has the negative on the outside, exterior flip, compression vertical by a half, and then I went to the right by two, and then I just had to make sure I went down by four for a final answer. All right, same thing on the next one. I'm gonna go ahead and graph the parent function Look something kind of like that. Make sure it's almost accurate. All right, this one's a lot nicer because I can see here's the origin. Here's the new one. I'm gonna check for compressions. Oh, look at that. No compressions because these points are exactly the same. 
and there's no flipping involved, which makes that a whole lot easier. So this one looks like I just went right four, one, two, three, four. And the last one is I went up by one, two, three, four, five. So that one is a whole lot nicer. So Y equals, because we have an equation, and I went right four, and then I went up five, so plus five for that final answer.